Evening everybody, Rob, reseller guy. Tonight's video, or morning video, whenever you're watching this, um, I follow uh, E-Waste Ben and Scrap and Pallet Guy, and or Scrap and Pallet Man, Scrap Bulger, and those guys, because um, I do the recycling just like everything else with my eBay stuff. Um, one of the things I did for E-Waste Ben, he said to put an ad in the, the local... <laughs> you know, free ads or whatever. See, so you can drum up business, right? Drum up stuff to recycle. Um, so I did one, so, you know, I pick up uh, scrap metal and e-waste and things like that, right? Got zero calls, zero, nothing. Excuse me. So then I decided, well, I'm going to do another one. Well, I'm going to say I'll buy broken uh, electronics uh, from like uh, Casey at Rockstar Flipper. He was talking about selling broken phones, so I tried that. Well, the minute you say you're going to pay people for some, you know, broken items, the freaking idiots come out in droves. Um, I can't believe the amount of people I got and want me to buy their stuff. Um, it was so crazy that I literally had to stop the ad and took it down because I was getting calls all hours of the day texting me pictures of literally crap crap i mean yeah some of the computers i could have got you know for a decent money but these people one i had yesterday she probably had 10 cell phones hopefully they weren't stolen um three laptops a couple computers some monitors and you know chargers and stuff like that and i was like she wanted two hundred dollars i'm like um, no, I told her in my ad, in my ad is say I pay scrap value, not retail, scrap value. So I offered her $50. So she threw this big sob story on me, you know, she's, you know, uh, diabetic and she's not working and, you know, I'm a pretty straightforward guy. You know, I try to help. I'm not, you know, trying to rip anybody off, but I don't appreciate when people try and take advantage of me. And I clearly thought this lady was doing it. The pictures that she sent me were from a different cell phone. They weren't her phone. So, again, I don't know if that was her stuff or not. I don't know if it was stolen. You know, who knows? The The background in the picture was very sketchy about where she was at. So I basically said, you know, I'm just going to pass. And then she went off and, you know, said, please, I need help. You know, I'll bake you pies. And you, I'm like, Really? fucking freaks i'm sorry you know i'm not and she's like well you got to come into my house and unload it red flag right there <laughs> never going to anybody's house you know if you meet them at their house <laughs> keep your ass out in the street or in the driveway where you know if shit goes south you can get away and you know i put it in craigslist you know i've never been a big fan of craigslist never thought that was worth a, a shit Everything on there was usually a bunch of freaking ripoff artists. And I'm sure a lot of people that may watch my video will say, no, I got great deals. Well, good for you. You know, I just don't like Craigslist. So my ads are down. I'm no longer doing that. I just figured it's just not worth it. Um, so what I'm doing now is, uh, you know, I have word of mouth. People give me stuff and, you know, I go... I have a couple of tech firms that give me crap that I go pick up, and it's nothing really big, but it's, you know, I figure you never know. One day they may lead me into somebody that's going to give me a bunch of shit. So, you know, one of my coworkers gave me a bunch of scrap that she had from her house, and she was just throwing stuff out. Um, and she knew that I scrapped stuff, so she told me I could have it. Now, some of the stuff, um, they're like... Um, chargers and things like that for phones there's a um, couple laptop chargers the ac adapters those type of things what's wrong with my phone here you're freaking out of focus um so i put them on ebay now again people here's a thought i never thought these things would be worth a dime i thought they were just garbage and i've been scrapping them right here i don't know if you can how well you can see them get back in the light a little bit right here it's a Panasonic AC adapter, right? Nothing fancy. Oh, there's a, there's a Motorola one stuck there. 
That damn thing is going for seven dollars. The other little Motorola thing that was dangling off there, that's for five. And it cost me nothing. And usually I just cut the cord off and scrapped them. Well, I'm not doing that now. I'm trying to sell them. I've got quite a I've got a few of them right now. I haven't I've sold two. I've sold a Wii station and another HC adapter for like a Panasonic or something. So I figure, you know, the old saying is, you know, one man's junk is another man's treasure. So people buy them. So I'm throwing them out there before I scrap them out. Now, they are small, so they don't take up a lot of space. Because so, in my man cave slash garage, I'm still freaking out of room. Um, and I'm bidding on two more storage units, three of them. That are, if I can get them, they're going to be potentially some serious money. Um, they're full of uh, a bunch of, um, there's laptops, there's computers. One of them even has a vintage, um, um, one of the first original Apple computers in it. Um, I lost count how many server racks there were in one of them. Um, yeah, got a bid up on them because, you know, that shit isn't free and everybody knows that. So, um, but anyways, that's another story in itself and we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, all the other storage units that I've bought they are now emptied out they're cleaned out so I'm no longer dealing with those a lot of stuff is still here as you can see I mean you still got crap everywhere so I'm trying to get it listed and you know it takes time so but one thing I the reason why the video is tonight was the things that I got from this lady I would, I never thought they were worth anything. I've been, quite frankly, I have no clue. I have no clue about these little things. And here they are right here. You can see them. They're EEPROM chips. Stuff that you program for, like, you know, the computers and stuff. Um, let me see if I can get one out here. And I have literally four, four, stacks or if you want to call things like this right here that i've already listed they're over there let's see these little things right here they're new they're not used because if they were you know used this these little prongs would be all jacked up but i have probably oh i want to say in the high hundreds more than that and they're freaking going for those the ones I have over there, I think they're going for seven to eight dollars a pop. And I have, like I said, I have three. Let me just go get them. I'm sitting here talking about them. If you look, see? Oops. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these. Eight of these, and they're averaging anywhere from six to eight dollars, maybe even higher, per unit or per EEPROM. And there's about 15 in each one of them. Now, they were given to me for free, so can't complain. And I was going to take one of these little boogers out. No, that's not it. Where'd it go? Oh, man. Oh, it's over there in the pack. One of those damn things. Um, they have all gold chips. Now, what I learned from e-waste bin was these things. I put it back in there. I shouldn't have. I don't know if you can see inside there. There's gold in there. Now, people can shred these up. I don't know how they recycle them, but there's gold inside that little, behind that little server there. There's gold inside here. Um, each one of these little things right here, I've checked them. One, two, three, four. And there's what, how many of them? Four eight 12 of them um six dollars a piece not bad money and you know the little they are like those right there those right there the little they are the more money they're worth which is amazing so you know she gave these to me she says oh we're just gonna throw them away we figured you want them you could do something with them I'm like hell yeah and then <laughs> these here See all those little, there is, my daughter did, and I forgot how many there was. There's like 2,000 of those little fingers. Now, 
those are all gold. So I'm going to sell those as a bulk. There's like probably six, seven pounds of those things. And, you know, that's by the pound. So I don't know what that's going to work. Probably get about 25 maybe maybe $30, $40, I would hope. Um, but anyways, so, you know, this little update there. These little EPROMs, I got to put them, I got to list them. And I can't test them. So, but I know they're not used. So I can list them as new. And that just ups the price. So, like, look at these little things. Imagine if each one of those, even at best or worst case scenario, paid me $3 a piece for them. They cost nothing to ship. They don't even weigh a, don't even weigh a pound. I think they're probably like three ounces, maybe two. And I've got a lot. I have lost count. I got a lot. So, but a lot of these are individuals. So that's going to be, each one of those has to be, you know, categorized and photoed and researched. But still, you know, I'm potentially looking at these, you know, two hundred dollars maybe. I I would be happy with one hundred and fifty, even because I don't they didn't cost me anything. But um, you know, my point to this whole video is, you know, networking and talking to people, even word of mouth, can bring you money. Um. I don't go out like uh, Scrap Vulture or E-Waste Bin or Scrap and Pallet Man to um, to recycle or go, you know, curb picking even taco stacks. You know, I work a, you know, eight to five job five days a week. And, you know, on the weekends, I bust my ass trying to clean up, you know, all the stuff I have on the side. If I if it was light outside, I'd show you my whole side yard is completely full of stuff that's got to be recycled. So, um, you know, keep pushing, networking, talking to people. Word of mouth will bring you business. You know, like E-Waste Ben said, you know, you know, put that ad in the paper. Man, I don't know. I Like I said, every freak in the world within, you know, every close to my area came out and wanted money for stupid shit. And then they wanted full price. And if you told them, no, they freaking went off on me. I mean, you know, people are telling me I'm, I'm a rip-off artist. You know, I'm just ripping people off. I'm, you know, I'm in it to just, you know, rip people off and make money for myself. Well, yeah, I'm in the business to make money. I'm not doing this shit for free. But I'm also an honest guy. You know, I'm not going to say your shit's worth 100 bucks when I know it's worth 10 you know, over the years I've been doing this, I've learned from videos and experience. I know what the shit's worth. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to give away my money. I work hard for it. Plus, my wife would give me shit if I did. But anyways, so that's the latest video. Um, I think I'm going to try and... Uh, the auctions don't end until the 16th. So if I win those, even one of them, and I'm bidding on three of them. I win one of them. Oh my god! I just want the one with the Apple lap, the Apple computer, because I know that's coin right there. That'll make up everything I'm going to spend. So we'll see how those go. Um, hopefully, I make another video before then. But I was going to say, you keep up pushing and talking to people and word of mouth, and you'll get stuff like this. You know, that's all money, and it didn't cost me a dime. Uh, than unloading it from her truck into my trunk. And the networking is huge because it's starting to pay off for me so people are calling. But anyways, so, you know, the video tonight is just basically network. Use all the avenues you can to try and get the product to recycle or sell. And uh, just keep trying. Don't give up. You'll get there. You'll get going. You know, and if you buy an auction or you go to like, you know, God, what's this guy's name? Tennessee Picker. I just started following him, and he's huge on yard sales. Well, out in California where I'm at, yard sales are kind of dwindling down. It's not so hot anymore, but it's getting kind of the fall, which is a slower time for the auction or yard sales. But and I just I can't see getting up, driving around for a couple of hours, trying to find something, beating everybody who's out doing the same thing you are. Um, trying to find shit to resell is worth it. To me, it's not. 
to me, you know, buying stuff in one big shot and one big bulk buy is the way to go. Um, it may not be for everybody. Um, you got to weigh the investment versus the risk. You know, you got to think about, you know, your initial investment in the product or the unit. What's it going to get you? What's it going to take for you to get it out of there and get it back to where you, wherever you're going to put it? Because I don't have a storage unit. I probably could, but I don't feel like spending the extra hundred and some dollars it is a month to have it. So, you know, if you weigh on, see, you know, I, for, for me, my personal, my business world, I'm in accounting. So it's a numbers game for me. If the numbers are right, then it's a good buy. If I'm looking at something and I'm making, you know, a couple of dollars, no, not really if I had to invest money to get it. Now, these little EEPROM things, you know what? If I make 2 or $3, that's 2 or $3 profit I didn't have, and I didn't have to invest. It takes me next to nothing to take a photo, a few minutes and a little, you know, listing. I could probably list 10 of those, 20 of those a night and be done within a couple of days. Now, that's another thing. <laughs> Tennessee Picker was like, you know. You know, he literally from his videos has a ton of stuff. He has, you know, an office that's just crammed full. And I can't say much because my garage is crammed full of stuff. But he's a one-man show, maybe I think two. He has people help him. Um, my daughter's here. They help me unload. My wife is a big help. She helps me unload and organize stuff and go through things. And, you know, I yay or nay it. If it's worth it, we keep it. If it's not, we donate it. But when it comes down to putting the actual numbers, listing on eBay, the photos, it's me. And working a 40-plus hour a week, a wife, two kids, a dog, and a cat, a house, and trying to grow an eBay business, it takes time. And it's not easy. And, you know, I come home sometimes, I'm... I'm up at 4.30 in the morning, 5, go to work, work all day, hour commute home, dinner, hear how the kids are doing, wife's doing, all that stuff, and then outside the list, and I'm usually up till 11, 30, 12 o'clock every night, and I do that seven days a week almost. So the people who think you're going to get rich doing this overnight, unless you have like a one-off, you know, autograph Babe Ruth baseball or you know you find a uh, Van Gogh behind an old piece of shit painting at a flea, flea market or a yard sale and make one big shot one killing you got to put your time into it people it doesn't happen overnight again I've been selling on eBay for over 11 years um, more as a you know business for the past year I just started doing videos, you know, they're not the best, but they're, that is what it is. You know, I'm not throwing money out of the, you know, YouTube camera or not a YouTube camera, a go video or, you know, any of those Canon cameras, you know, I use my cell phone and if it's not good enough, sorry, but you know, I'm just trying to dialogue or, you know, explain my journey as I'm on my way to try to, you know, make money on eBay. Would I like it, um, you know, if I made this full-time? Heck yeah, I would love it. Um, but for me to be a full-time eBayer, my my output in funds, you know, pays my bills with my job. Um, you know, I make a good living. I have a good job. I work for a great company. You know, I'm my boss. I don't have, you know, I got one guy above me who's a really cool guy. And he lets me do my crap. Um, so the eBay stuff is a bonus. It turned into a, it was a hobby that I did just to have something to do. Now it's turning into all this. The scrapping, I do it because I enjoy taking the shit apart. It's relaxing. You know, I used to be into the cars, used to have uh, hot rods and you know, when my dad was alive, I would, we were, you know, build hot rods and, you know, 32 T-Bucket, you know, 32 High Boys, 23 T-Bucket Roadster, 68 Dodge Super B, 66 Fleetside GMC Pickup, 
you know, 62 Wolfsburg edition, uh, edition Volkswagen Bug. So I've been around things mechanically and always doing something with my hands. So to be able to take crap apart, stuff apart, is you know, you don't make a killing at it. You don't, you know, I'm not like you always been or scrap vulture or taco stacks or, you know, a pallet, scrap and pallet guy, you know, they're pretty much doing that full time. Um, but to me, that's my relaxation. That's how I unwind. And then I jump right back into it with all the numbers and shit on eBay. So but anyways, I kind of went on a little rant there, but kind of maybe now you guys now, you know who I am and how I do things. Um, you know, simple dude. I try and make a little extra extra money on the side. I do this for a hobby that, like I said, is growing into a business, which is fine. Um, but I just do it because I enjoy it. And sharing my experiences with you guys is just a bonus. Whether you like the video or not, it's up to you. It is what it is. But if you do like it, hit a like button and maybe subscribe, and I'll try and do some more. Rob Reseller Guy. See you guys later.